Paint. Which Bob Ross. That guy that had, oh yeah. Yeah, he wasn't he awesome? Totally okay. What are you guys up to? This is Dark Jay. We're oh, the, just doing uh, some art. Campus on which is the free campus is here. Say really. Everything is okay. Anything good? Who's Harold Kumar? Um, they do the movies. You ever see the like Harold and Kumar go to White Castle? Nope, everything's good. Thanks for coming. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, the hamburger place. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming to campus tomorrow. They are not. I don't really. Yeah. And they're endorsing uh, President Obama. And unfortunately, he does not want to make marijuana illegal. At least, I maybe mean, he does, but he hasn't. So. Well, you know, Amer uh, marijuana is legal in some states. That's true. Yeah. Medical. Yeah. Yeah. Is it legal? What, what I find unfortunate. I just watched a documentary on it. Uh, I find it unfortunate that even though there are uh, states where it's legal and people are getting the medicine they need, for example, Colorado, Definitely the feds Colorado. still come in and raid the dispensaries yeah, the where people thing. are getting their did, medicine. Did you watch that documentary they had on that? Um, no. Well, what do there have been a few documentaries. Uh, 
Yeah, California, they have medical dispensaries, right. but the but feds still rate on um, Netflix. Yeah, I've seen one. Um, I want to say something like Hotheads or. No, something like that, some kind of. Well, I've been to the, the jail uh, here in Cheshire County for possession of marijuana, and I got to speak with the warden, Rick Van Wickler. Right. And he, uh, he, he wants the drug criminals gone out of there. He, he doesn't even want to hold them. And I know it's, it's his job to keep them there if that's what the law says, but I mean, when you have the people who are supposed to be keeping people in jail saying, I want these guys out, I really think it's time for New Hampshire to There's join the rest of, of the states. Bad things going on in this world. Yeah. Yeah, I know, um, I think we met before. My name's Derek, by the way. Derek and Brendan. Brendan, yeah. I, I know we, we met James, before at the uh, Huntsman right, campaign. You? Yeah, yeah, you were wearing a cap. <laughs> That's where I see you before, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's good to see you again, Brandon. Hope you're having a good night. Oh, yeah, I Hope am. It's uneventful Sunday night. No, <laughs> you know, it was a big alarm because, you know, somebody thought somebody was doing something bad over here. I just I want to really, make sure there's like a phone call. This is, this is public property, right? This is still yeah. And so actually, it, yeah, it's the state because uh, uh, Keith State maintains it and everything, and it's part of the new TDS building. We just don't want anything on here that's gonna, you know, be directed negative to anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't believe there's any profanity or anything. So. Where's your rest of your crew tonight? Oh, it's a Sunday. It's kind of hard to, to get people motivated, you know. <laughs> this is an unplanned thing, too, <coughs> oh, to just... be honest with you. Oh, really? Yeah, kind of spurred the moment. Well, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it looks... I think it looks great. It looks well, great. Well. So all, all, all these, like, U.S. has... 25% of the world's prisoners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. and about half of them are drug criminals. You're like, you, 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 when you say drug, is that just marijuana? Are you talking everything? No, all drugs. Um, because a lot of drugs, are, they, people should be in prison for. Well, about half of the drug crimes yeah, I put are that, marijuana anyway. There's, there's like 2.6 million people in prison. <laughs> about half of them, 1.3, are in for pot. Yeah, but you guys know that kids are dying from alcohol. If if drugs were legal, we could actually get medical help. Instead of arresting people, we should try to help them. Don't you agree? Oh, I think that part of the justice system. Like I, I agree with you. There are a lot of problems with drugs, but even legal drugs like prescriptions, people That's, use Adderall right. in colleges. Prescription drugs is it's a big problem in the United States mm -hmm. because kids are taking. You know, they get into their parents' medicine cabinet and they sell the drugs. You know. Yeah. And that's right there. They don't have to go anywhere to get it. It's like back in the day, it was like, when I was well, a young kid, my, take your parents' cigarettes, you know, you weren't supposed to do that, <laughs> or raid their liquor cabinet. You know, yeah, my, so. my belief, personally, when you have prohibition, whether it's alcohol or drugs, you have gangs, you have crime, organized crime. So it's like the, the prohibition is worse than the actual drugs. Right. Like the people getting killed. I think when they had prohibition, they made a lot of money. Yeah, there's so much money into well. it. They make a lot of money now off illegal drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Less on the alcohol, because that's a structured business thing. No, alcohol... <laughs> that's a big problem, because, you know, when students drink or when anybody drinks, they get really... They, it's like they call it like that, you know, alcohol bravery. Mm -hmm. right. Li liquid and, courage. Liquid courage. And that's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and, it, and it's, it's rough, because you don't want to be driving down the road and some guy's hammered and he... Now it just takes out your family. Now you're just thinking, man, I wish I could do more with uh, education, you know? Yeah, one thing I was thinking about, like DUIs, yeah, drunk people are going to drive home, mm -hmm. but maybe if it wasn't against the law, we could have them drive at five miles per hour with their blinkers on. No, <laughs> still. They're going to drive the speed limit now because they don't want to get pulled over. Right. And That's why like, I agree with you. I prefer cars. not to have them on the road, mm. but they, if they know they're going to get in trouble, 
then they're gonna they're gonna try to blend in instead of like I'd rather if I'm driving I'd rather know like this guy is drunk I can be careful around him you know what I mean because it's yeah. obvious like even though it's illegal they're still driving home can they're still idea? killing 15,000 people a year right what's your idea that um, you, you proposed that people who are drunk perhaps it would be better if they were allowed uh, by law to drive home with their flashers on at five miles an hour just so yeah, they that's, can at least get that's not my idea like you preference this preference this by saying first I think driving home drunk is a poor idea and it's not a good thing however saying that I would rather have them drive at five miles per hour with their flashers on and then if they did hit someone or, or got an accident it would not maybe it would not be fatal like it's better to ha in my opinion it's better to have an accident where there's not fatalities I think I've read like 15,000 people each year are killed the number's actually gone down. It was like 17,000 in 2006. And hey, why do you think the number's gone down? I don't know. I think it's education and uh, strict enforcement. It's been going down for like but it's also, uh, 50 years. Tell you the truth, so I, I, think it, I think you're I all right. I, I wouldn't want anybody driving drunk because if you, if you are, it doesn't matter if you're going 5 miles an hour or 15 miles an hour or 30. Well, let me ask you this. When you get hit would by you, a vehicle, like would that you car like was have, probably doing about 5. If you went out in front of that vehicle, you'd be dead. Have you ever driven like like 20 hours like you're real tired have you ever it's worse than being drunk oh yeah but it's not against the law down in florida i know that um they have a problem with uh the drivers elderly drivers mm -hmm. because um i think it was someone was telling me but they have a lot of instances where people are just running lights and it's basically the same thing you know yeah but like let's say let's say someone is drunk and they hit someone and they they kill or they damage property or they injure someone I definitely agree they should be held responsible. It doesn't matter if you're drunk, uh, sober, tired, you are responsible for your actions, regardless of if you're under the influence or not. I think it's just it's just a matter of like, okay, this person has damaged someone, they need to be held to account for that, you know what I mean? Yeah, and a lot of people, I mean, they've had a lot of accidents in Keene where uh, people who have been drunk hit other objects or people mm -hmm. and then they flee the scene yeah because they know the consequences that's a crime though isn't it it is a crime so right? <laughs> you know and in the state of new hampshire i mean well, you, know, you, you guys have... could probably argue this but it's a privilege to have your driver's license you know it's not a right mm -hmm. and that's been you know i know they had one incident in milford a long long time ago with one that uh somebody got pulled over and, and the woman didn't want to give her id and she said I didn't need an ID, so she ended up in jail. I'm not sure if you remember that woman. Lauren Canario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a friend of mine who pulled her over. No mm -hmm. way. Yeah, <laughs> he was totally nice to her though. He yes, was, he was. He was not a jerk at all. No, it was that was a great interaction. Yeah. So. It inspired a, a comic to be made too. There, there's a comic version of that also. Yeah. But we just, you know, when we got called over here, just to let you guys know, we just, uh, we just wanted to make sure there was nothing that was. It would, you know. I mean, everyone in this group, they don't believe in damaging property. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying I, that. But, you know, I, but we yeah, but I'm, we, I'm saying, like, we weren't vandalizing. Right. We're just trying to exercise our right. freedom and of we speech. Did, we didn't know, so that's why we came over to talk to you guys. Well, but, we appreciate yeah, you being is, very nice and yeah. courteous. Yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, your demeanor, Brandon. I didn't get to know you. I'm Officer Martinez. Martinez, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm Derek. I oh, I'm uh, James. I do. It's, it's really great to I'm Garrett. have That's a, really friendly, okay, casual okay. encounters okay. with uh, the, I don't know if you guys are law enforcement or just a I do security. work as a police officer too. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's great to have these types of interactions because uh, it's, it it's not always this way. So a lot of times there's a lot of adrenaline pumping and I, I like to <laughs> keep it casual and, and be friendly. And You, you got know. rid of the hat though. What's up with that? You know, during my last <laughs> arrest, uh, I was, <laughs> the hat fell off my head and it's lost forever now. So. I'll have to get a new one, but yeah, that was very signature. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like, uh, yeah, the Huntsman thing. <clears throat> yeah, that was something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you guys, you guys, you guys did leave though. I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, I just yeah. think people just get upset when people protest and, and really want it because how did you know? Wasn't, wasn't there enough protest to get the people out of Vietnam? Wasn't that the, the hippie movement that? protested enough to have the 
the guys leave Vietnam. Yeah. Pressure the president. I wasn't there, but uh, that's what I hear. Not in history, I mean, yeah. Right, yeah, that's what I hear is that uh, protest is healthy for, uh, for peace. Uh, and when people aren't able to protest, it's... Because other countries, we wouldn't be able to do in the States, see you do this and automatically they you know, chop your arm off. Or... Yeah, absolutely. So I, I count my blessings to be able to uh, participate in, in But this the other way. side of the coin on that is, if you don't exercise your right, you might as well not have it. So if people aren't going out holding signs and, and stating their opinion and, right. and chalking and showing up to the Huntsman event or, or whatever, you might as well not even have the right, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, I, and I think you guys, I mean, that's why it's nice living in the United States, because you can do that. Yeah, you I know? agree with you. We I, were trying to take it away by, you know, creating that day. Well, I have a, a question for you. Does uh, this college have a free yeah, speech a free zone? Free zone. Sorry for interrupting <laughs> you. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I think that, that, that day that they established one, um, I don't know if they knew that you guys were coming, or if they just knew because the media was going to be there. Oh, the free speech zone? Yeah. Yeah. Like personally, I that seemed totally made up, in my opinion. It came, uh, you know it came what? Over, I, was like, I, I don't know because I was just uh, told what to do. You know, I was doing my job, and um, that's when I had the interaction with you guys, and it yeah. went fairly well. I thought. Yeah, um, I, I felt like uh, my supposed right to free speech was infringed upon that day um, because obviously I wasn't hurting anyone. I wasn't right, making but I think a under that, scene. It, it's, if you incite by uh, creating an atmosphere where somebody is feels nervous or even the crowd, like if you were to stand up in a movie theater and say, um, fire, and everybody started running and somebody got hurt and killed, and they yeah. found out it was you who did it. I, yeah, I agree with I, you. That's I, going I back that. to the, if if you you the count for your actions. Right, if you cause alarm, and people, because some people cannot take some people yelling and screaming because either they have some post-traumatic stress in their life or whatever. And they, they wanted to go there and listen to the person and so. stuff. So well, I, the I have a question me, though. Well, uh, what? Like May, the concern for me was that I was told multiple times while entering the building that signs weren't allowed. And this is a new thing. Um, starting with Obama, uh, he's not allowing signs at political rallies. And that started in 2010. I think you know what it is, is sometimes they don't want people coming in there with opposing signs like like say yeah. if Ralph Nader, you guys all know Ralph Nader, yeah. right? How famous he is. If someone was voting for Ralph Nader and, and President Obama was in there and they were holding Ralph Nader, Ralph Nader, it's kind of taken away from, you know, the what they want to deliver their speech and they want to show people what they can offer. And that's what people look for. They want to know what a politician can give them without making all these, you know, promises that they don't really keep, you know? Yeah, hey, going back to the alarm thing though, by, by what metric should the alarm, like, let's say I see someone walking with a gun down the street and that causes me alarm, should that be illegal? Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Or I think in the state of New Hampshire, as you guys all well know, <laughs> you know, you can carry a gun outside your purse and you don't need a permit. And uh, Like some people, some cultures, I may be getting this wrong, but I think in some Asian cultures, like not wearing a shirt for a male is cause for alarm, let's say. There, there is. And or in the French culture, maybe they like to go nude more than Americans. Right, and you can see that in Brattleboro. You know, you go to Vermont. Yeah, it's legal there, there's no right. problems. Hey, I, don't see, I don't see nude people, I work in Brattleboro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I see one. <laughs> well, they still have that old thing, you know, that people can walk down there nude. And, and, um, I just think that when uh, People get alarmed at different things. Mm -hmm. It's like some people, uh, when the fire trucks come and they get the flashers going, some people can be thrown into seizures from the from the lights uh, flashing. So sometimes we just got to tell the fire department, hey, can you turn the fire lights off? Because we got some students that will be thrown into seizures, and they're good about it. Yeah, one thing I, I noticed, like I watched these old movies. I wasn't alive back then, but the cop car had like one rotating <laughs> siren. Now it's like. It's a light show, well, you know you what know I mean? Why, you know why that is? Because there's so much traffic on the road and a lot of cops are getting hit. And the only reason why they have those lights is so they can see them so far away. Because mm -hmm. if you ever watch a lot of the uh, programs like cops and stuff like that, but where they had hits where the cop gets out of the car and looks back and then boom, they have their people. It's like, you know, the, I, I say it's like the light, you know, when the bug goes in, don't go for the light. Mm -hmm. And they're like, like this. 
It's like they get sucked in. Actually, I'll have video. Do you, are you familiar with the Keene Police Department? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not there. sure which officer. I have an officer, he's like, he's pulled over one of my friends, so I'm recording it. <laughs> I guess full disclosure here, but I have video and I pointed out in the video, like it's raining and he gets out of his car and he stands in traffic. He gets out of the car in traffic, there's cars passing him. And then he stands in, in the road talking to the driver. And I, I was just thinking like, maybe you should go to the other side. Well, they, you do. And I mean, I work in a town. Just for safety purposes. Right, I work in a small town where there's, there's like one street light or two street mm -hmm. lights and you're out there by yourself. And sometimes it, it's, it's good to, you know, go on the other side of the vehicle. But the bad part is there's a lot of ditches. If you That's go on true. the other side of the vehicle, you'd be like, <laughs> you're done, you know? Well, th this case, it was no, no ditch or anything. Right. I was actually standing in the grass, so he could have stood there as right. well. Right, and it's, and, it's, and it's nervous too when you're a police officer, when you pull someone over, you don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of incidents where police officers have been getting shot. When they pull, you know, when they pull behind somebody. Yeah, that's that's Jeremy an argument. Jeremy Sharon over there, and in, in, um, I think he's from Hillsboro, but he got shot and killed in a small town. He pulled up behind these two guys to check them out because they're in a in a rest area, and he had some words with them, you know, not bad words, but back and forth. And the guy turned around, and shot him, and killed him. That's a that's a case though for not having bad laws. Like, let's say I'm a, a criminal and I have three drug convictions and I have a bunch of drugs in my car and you've just pulled me over and I have a weapon, I'm gonna consider in my mind, I really don't wanna to go to jail. Right. I, you know, I'm not thinking ahead, I'm just gonna shoot you mm -hmm. because it's the convenient thing to do. I, you know, for me at the time, 